But this is only Okay. So um, let's take a look at our lab for today. You are gonna do lab 5-2, system devices and status. This is easy. But um, when you do the second part of A+, it's gonna ask you a lot more on the OS side on how to troubleshoot your system on the software side, which is the operating system and the application side. Okay, you can download this document here. And this is the document. So we'll start with Windows 10. We are gonna right click the Windows button and we are gonna go into device manager, okay? We've seen this before. So we know that device manager lists all your installed components. So what we will do is we are gonna use the device manager and we're gonna take a look at specific device configuration. And we've seen this when we were looking at CPU and um, RAM and all of the other areas, right? So in Device Manager, it's going to tell you to right-click the computer name, select scan, and to look for hardware chain changes. So here's the computer name at the top. You're going to right-click it, and you're going to choose scan for hardware changes. So whenever that you install new hardware, and if it's not showing up on Device Manager, but most likely it will, but some case in some cases it doesn't, then you want to right-click the computer and then choose scan for hardware changes. If it detects new hardware, and if it doesn't have the driver for that hardware, it will show an exclamation point, right? Exclamation point just means that you have to still configure it. And if the device is not working or disabled, then you should see a red X. So if everything is working accordingly, you don't see any kind of warning. So we, what we did was we right click into scan for hardware changes. And then we are going to go to print queues. So in this chapter, it's gonna to touch on different types of printer. Um, A plus does ask you about printer and print troubleshooting. I know that we digitize a lot of things, but there are companies and people who still require printing out hard copy of things like receipts at the stores, um, you know, invoices and so on. So in the next step, which is what you see on step four here, right? We would have the print queues. So what are some of the print queues listed? If you installed Adobe, you would have Adobe PDF. You would also be able to do a Microsoft print to PDF. It's a software format where we can convert the file that we need to print like a web page to PDF. And this is lab five two, we are here. Okay, so if you have your windows, so we know that we would have Adobe, you can report. Okay, and then we would have Adobe PDF, Microsoft print to PDF. And then we also have um, XPS document writer. That is traditionally Microsoft tool, right? But like they later implemented the print to PDF and then you have OneNote, OneNote on Windows 10. And then this is the printer that they installed here that's located at the end of the room. So whatever printer that you have installed, like on your home computer, you would see that there. And then your root print queue and send it to OneNote. So I'm just gonna list OneNote, okay? And then um, MS XPS, Document Writer. Okay. We're working on 5.2, we're at step four. Okay, and then 
you would have root point Q and I have an HP LJ M506. What is it? M506. Which is an HP printer that we have. Okay. So now you can always make your Windows system to become a print server. What that does is you just use that particular system to manage all the print queues. So it will send it through the network and it's going to send it to that computer and that computer will be then sent to the printer. Now, is that going to be always the case? No, right? But most businesses now have a print server and the way that we would use print server is just to make sure that we can manage print in case where you have an individual, a user that accessibly prints stuff like print everything, right? I, I have a couple co-workers that are like that. We live in the digital world, but they print out everything, including email, right? So in that case, what you can do is you can put limit on, you know, and then access for certain printer. You can, you can change the access to a certain object like a printer. So you don't have to have a Windows server operating system to run a print server. You can use a regular operating system like Windows 10 or Windows 7 to run a print server. So our print queue is listed in device manager and you would see that those are the options when the user click the printer button, right? That's gonna be the options that's presented to the, the user, our install printer and all of those. Then you're gonna go in back into device manager. I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this now by clicking the arrow. And then I'm gonna go into sound and video, which is right here. And sound and video and game controller. So if you have game controller installed, you would see that there. You would also see audio, like surround sound type of audio um, devices if you have installed. So, most of the time in Windows environment, if you're using Intel base, you would see Realtek. Um, I use a microphone right now for Zoom, so that's why I have that CM Tech that's a little different than yours. And then you have the, the Intel display audio, and then the NVIDIA. This is built in on the motherboard. It's a chip that is integrated onto the board. So that way you would have sound when you plug in your USB or your analog speaker cable, uh, if the board supports that. So how, what type of audio devices are listed? We can include those. So I would say Intel Display Audio, NVIDIA High Definition Audio, so that's an HD, and then Realtek Audio. Let me put this in red. I have a real tech. And then NVIDIA HD audio. And on mine, I also have a CM tech. I'm not gonna put that because it's a little bit different than yours. Okay, so now, um, for our audio devices, you would see that you do have some, some audio output directly from your system. And also you can also integrate additional audio component if you, so why is that important? What if the people is using the system are gonna be working with sound like DJs or composer or, you know, people who are um, editing different type of clips like for, for uh, you know, podcasts and things like that. So you would see that sometimes you would need some kind of sound capture component, which is like your video adapter, there's a sound adapter and it's able to capture sound and it has more capability like than your normal onboard audio in that you can edit the, you know, the sound, you can, you can modify, you can make it cleaner. 
um, things like that. So you would see, and then sometimes that, that those type of adapter, you can actually plug in a MIDI player. You know, you guys know what MIDI player, right? For keyboards and things like that. So when you play your keyboard, like the piano keyboard, I'm not talking about keyboard to type, but the piano keyboard, then it will capture the, the things that you play, right? Uh, so my husband, he does a lot of stuff with music. So he does, he has stuff, but he prefers to use Apple system because Apple just have some better software tools. However, you do have people using PC. All right, uh, what type of audio devices are listed? Sorry, I put this above that. But what we want to do is we want to take this and put it under A. Okay, we're going to look at your universal serial bus controller. That's your USB. Make sure that we know what USB stands for, for A+. Okay, and we would have different type of USB. Now, on the logical side, it's going to list the host, the root hub, and so on. So here, I'm going to shrink the sound, and then I'm going to go to the bus controllers, which is next to last right here. And you are going to see quite a few. You're going to have the, the media USB 3.1 extensible host controller. This is what they use to be able to adapt some of the um, USB port from your monitor over to your tower. Um, and then you also have the generic hub, right? That would allow you to connect multiple devices into that one port. And then your extensible, another extensible controller through Intel. And then you have some composite devices and your root, uh, your USB root hub. Now, Microsoft is going to put in the generic driver for these. So if you're using something USB and it's not able to give you the device information. So for example, once in a while, like I would use Arduino and when I plug it into USB, Sometimes it doesn't tell me it's Arduino. It will tell me just a device connected or nothing at all. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that I configure that port to, to see it because it's not loading the driver for that particular connected device. So what you can also do is you can scan for changes like what we did before. And then on each of the, the um, option right here, you can select update driver and so on. Right, so you can scan for hardware changes if it's plugged in and it's not seeing it, you would do that there. Okay, so in general, you know, we can just list some of the types there. Hello. So we wanted to say we would have um, the Intel, the Intel extensible host controller, the generic USB hub. So I'll start with generic. USB hub, right, Intel host controller. And then I would have a USB root hub. And then I have USB composite. We're doing lab five two and we're at number six. Okay. What type of USB hub that's that's listed? I have the generic. And then I also have the root. The root hub and the generic. I didn't list the extensible one on the one above, but you can include that. AS Media. If you have that, you can include it. The whole point in this is not, it doesn't have to be the exact answer. I just want to show you where you can find the information in case you need to fix it. Right, device manager. And then we would be able to see what's connected. So now we're going to close the device manager and then we are going to go into the system. Okay, so close this. And then we're going to right click 
Windows button. These are going to be a lot of your management console and including settings to change your system configuration and then you can click system. So this is the same thing as going into control panel and then click on system and security and system, right? That would take us three steps or we can just right click and then choose system. Right click the window start button and go to system. Okay, so here's your system property. Now it tells us that we want to click on the sound tab and then we want to look at the output devices. So if you have speaker that are connected to your computer, you would be able to, to see that. And then if you have microphone that's connected to your computer, you would see the input. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we are going to go back here and then we are gonna click on sound tab. And so your input devices are listed here. You see how I have my microphone added. But if you don't have a microphone, it might say the real tech or the generic ones that, that, that um, would be for Intel use. So my input device, I have a microphone and you can list whatever you find there. on the wrong one. And then for my output device, even though I can't hear sound in this room, it will be here. So that will be speaker or headphones and that's gonna be real tech. So um, they had connected this, okay? And then if I wanted to use the, the Dell high definition audio, which is a separate, a different chip, then I can choose this option. Okay, so I'm not gonna mess up the configuration there, but uh, we'll just put we'll just put real tech audio, speaker, and headphones. Speaker, headphones. So that's where you would be able to find your audio devices, especially for Zoom use, right? You can set it in Zoom, but you also need to check your system settings to make sure that you have those set up there. Because Zoom will see all your devices, but you wanna make sure you select the right one that you're using. Under the output devices, click on the troubleshoot button. This is the troubleshoot. So if you have a hard time in my case, if I don't see this moving, I can click the troubleshoot. And then if I don't hear anything, then I can click troubleshoot, okay? And then it's gonna take you to the help option from Microsoft. And then it's gonna give you like some of the tips on how to troubleshoot. So this is like giving you the help. And they use AI for this, even if you try to chat with them, right? So um, in the assignment, it touches how you click the troubleshoot button, make sure that the default, uh, current default device is to select it like the speakers, and then the next button, then select yes, open audio enhancement options. Okay, so we should we should use, instead of what it's telling you there, we should use manage sound devices. Okay, we wanna use manage sound devices. And then what we're gonna do is we can select instead of this, right? Cause it's slightly different operating system addition. So you do have some different feature and then you can just go to, so here what it's just telling you is you, you just you can use the additional options. Okay, so we're gonna select speaker and it's only gonna give you that, hold on one second. Let me see what I meant when I put that. I 
Are you okay? Yeah, I think that they changed this option. So let me see. Good idea. I think it gives you more options there. Okay. The other way, the other one, it just makes you feel like a baby. <laughs> well, it's simple for yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it just gives you this, but I think I think I'm using a when I wrote the instruction, I used a different um, version of Windows 10. So it gives you slightly different options in how you would adjust it. Also, my audio devices might be a little different. I thought I wrote it in this room, but it could that the updates are different. Anyway, so here what it's saying is that when you, you can go in and then you can uh, change your devices and then you can go into some of the option for that device and uh, for the audio property, you can access all of that. Let's go back. You can access all of that by just clicking the device property and it's going to take you here. Okay. And then on this property, it's different than the one that you see in your, in your device manager in that it doesn't give you the actual driver option it only gives you the configuration option, okay? Now on the control panel side, if you do use that, you would see that on the, on the device itself, you do have additional, you know, things here that you can change, okay? So that allows you to manage on how you want to use your device. So to answer this uh, for the driver tab property, the driver version. So I'm going to come back to device manager, which is easier. Okay. And then under sound, let's do real tech audio because that's usually the default for windows. And then you can go into um, properties. So what I did was I went into device manager and you can search for it or you can right click windows. And then you select the, the default device, which is usually Realtek. And then you would do a property, right click it and choose property. And then you would go into the driver tab. So here you would have the, the driver version is gonna be 6.0. So I'm gonna copy this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put that here. As an answer. And sometimes you have to roll back the, the driver. So if it's been updated and it's not working to your liking, well, then you can roll it once. back. Yeah. I had to do that. It was so annoying. Yeah, it I had it happen where I, I just started hearing a lot of interference um and static. I don't know why it was doing that, just a software issue. So yeah, we can you can roll it back. So if you look at, you know. Um, you can uninstall the, the device if you want to remove it, but when you go to the property, you can roll back the driver if it's been updated. This one, they haven't really updated, so you can't roll, really roll it back, but that will be an option if you already updated it, okay? When was the driver installed? This was installed on 5-7-2019 on your system at home that will be different. Usually it's with your Windows installation or when you bought the system and you start finishing the setting, configuration system, settings, setup. Okay. And then we are gonna go ahead and uh, we are gonna come back to property and then you can click update driver and when you, if you use the search automatically, it's gonna go to the OS version of the driver. 
So at RCCD, I know they don't update their stuff very frequently, like they do test it because if they update it, some application might not work properly. So, but at home, even if you do do this, it's gonna go to the OS side and then unless you downloaded it from the website. So if you're not sure, I would go to the manufacturer website, download the driver and then browse to it using this option, which is a better way than just clicking this and it's just going to go to the OS, which doesn't really resolve anything if you run a cross driver issue. Okay. So in, in our case, you would go to Alienware and then you look up this model and then you go to their support section and download and you would find the chipset driver and inside the chipset driver, there is a sound driver. And you would be able to get that or NVIDIA if they have also an additional uh, device that's NVIDIA, you can download that too. Sometimes other generic driver will work with our existing. Sometimes it doesn't. It might cause conflict. So that's how you update driver using the automatic option. Okay, did the driver gets updated to the newer edition? So let's check. I didn't look at it. Oh, no, I don't want to uninstall. So when I click update here, right, it just tells me that this has already been the best one, right? So update or on the device. So you have to go to the website and download. So um, did it change the date? No, right? So no. When you do do that, it doesn't. No new changes. It just used the OS version. Then we wanted to get, get out of the system settings and then we are gonna go to computer management console. So on Windows 10, you can right click and then go to computer management console. On the home edition, you don't have a lot of the, the additional feature like, like what you've seen. The strip down home doesn't actually have this option but most of the basic home would do that now. Um, so when you go into computer management console and you can always search for everything, you know that you can type it in here and find it or you can right click Windows start and then find computer management console. So in here, it's pertaining to your local system. We can say this is where we can schedule a task. So when you run like your antivirus application on the application, you, you know, you specify the time that you want to run it, it actually set up the software actually set up a time setting with the system so that way it runs that application. But you can do it directly from the system itself, from the OS itself is here. All OS has this feature. Then you have event viewer, which tracks everything that happens inside the system, including security, right? Issues, um, you know, windows, applications, and so on. What do you mean you hate Event Viewer? Event Viewer is security people best friend. I had a, I had a lot of better experience. All yeah, right. So, so here we are gonna go into Computer Management Console. We're gonna click on Performance, and then we are going to look at the memory sections, and then we're gonna look at the mem the the bytes. Okay. So performance is here. <clears throat> This looks similar to what you've seen in Task Manager on, on the Performance tab, right? What am I talking about? So if you look at Task Manager, you have a Performance tab, and it's, but it just gives you a prettier graph like this. What it's also doing here is it's tracking a few things, CPU, memory, disk, you know, your storage, network connection, and so on. So on, on here, you see that it's it just listing, it's the same content, it's just listed by a different category, like your network is under network interface, your memory is here, but it's not giving you the graph, just the percentage. So your M bytes, you don't have to be exact because that changes. So here I'm looking at what, 25, so about 25 gigs. Okay, so 25484, I'm just gonna list that.
Now, if you look at your desktop at home, it's going to be much less, right? Or the same if you have the same amount of RAM. If you have 32 gigs, then you will be close to that, but it doesn't have to be exact. Your network interface is going to be, oh, not that one. Your network interface, so that's your RAM right here. Okay, your M bytes. That means that those amount, this amount is available for, for more application to use. And then your network interface, we're looking at about uh, roughly, I want to say 40,000, right? It's so small. Yeah, 40 million. So it's in the giga, so let's say 40. It changes all the time. So we wanted just to do an, a rough estimate. So I'm just going to do a 40. This. And then we can look at the disk. And on performance monitor on the task manager, it does the same thing. It gives you that. Also the graphic, the GPU. But here, your physical disk is here. So it tells you the, the percentage for idle. That means that it's not really being used, where it's just you know staying neutral the same. Then your average queue length. So in general, you would see that it's mostly idling, right? Your disk is not high functioning unless you're running some kind of application or you're downloading files, you, you're pushing in a lot of data storage, then you would see that percent change. Okay, so we are gonna record. We are gonna record the, um, the total idle time. Rough estimate will be fine. So I wanna say 99% is okay. So we are, our disk is mainly idling, like I said, right? We're not doing anything heavy duty unless you are transferring a lot of files, you know, resizing your partitions, installing, you know, applications, you would see some changes there. Then we are going to look at the processor information and then we're going to look at the percentage processor time. So here, here's your processor. Percentage processor time is your total, uh, it changes between like what, two and five. So, and then you also have like additional counter on the right, okay? If you keep looking, because you have multiple core. <clears throat> so the total will be fine. So we will, I wanna say maybe four point, I saw 4.0. Okay, on the left side of the computer management console, we are gonna click on monitoring tools and then there's another option for performance. <coughs> Sorry, follow the step. <coughs> okay. Mm -hmm talking all day. Okay, so your performance monitor is here. And then you can add your counter. So those are the counter you're gonna add. With GPU, memory processor, and this. Okay. 
So when you click the plus sign, here's where you pick. So we're gonna pick GPU adapter memory. That's your VRAM. So once you select it, right, it's gonna tell you here, you're gonna have to click add. Then you are gonna click, you're gonna select memory, so they're alphabetized. So go down to M, and then select this. Now, if you want specific categories, then you can, you can select the subcategory there. We're gonna add everything from memory. Then on here, we're gonna select processor all. So then we are gonna go back to our P processor, and then we're gonna click add for everything. And then we are going to select, lastly, physical disk. And the first disk is always going to be your zero disk. That's usually all OSs, right? DVA zero in Linux or physical disk C drive zero in Windows. So come back up here. We are going to go to D for disk. <clears throat> And then, what was it? Oh, physical disk, I'm sorry. So we are gonna go down to P for physical disk. And then click add. So now once I have all the counter, I'm gonna click okay. And what it will do is gonna pull the data for me. So here is where you will be able to see your performance for your system, right? Why is this important? Not just for personal use, but for business, because if you have a system that's running low on RAM or it's malfunctioning on the hardware side, we, we should be able to also see that on the software side, okay? Now, is this gonna be, like what we've seen in task manager? No, because you can actually be more specific on what you want to gather. This is a lot of information, but like I showed you, you can actually graph out one item or a group of items under that category. And perpmon is very important in server environment along with your client system environment. Okay, so now, once it have, if you want to stop it, you just hit a pause and then you should be able to view the data, right? Like I can actually take a look from, from this time to this time doing this window of time. This is how it's performing. So when they normally measure this is when you have the most use of your system. So in, for example, if you're trying to measure this, when you're gaming, right, you're gonna have a higher spike compared to when you are just, your system is just idling or you opening one web page. So you are gonna have different storage usage, different uh, performance in CPU and your, your memory for your video and so on. So the whole point in this is to really see how your resources are allocated using the OS. Okay, so when we administer the system, that's important. So I want you to take a screen capture so we can do a clip or we can just press print screen and then we would then put it in. Oops. Here, right? I have a double screen, so it's showing that. Okay, so we will pause it 
and then we would click on change graph on the drop menu and then you you would see next to the on the left of the green button so here you would see a change graph option right here next to the plus sign and then if you choose you can do a histogram bar where it is a little bit more visible and then you would you can also generate a report. So if you tell your manager that you want to upgrade RAM on the computer because, you know, it's running low on RAM to make sure that it operates the application, then you, you would then need to give them a report why it's doing that, right? We have to justify the reason. Okay. And that the report is pretty clean. You can actually uh, export this out to CVS, which puts it into like an Excel format. So that in that only few minutes, I'm able to pull all of this data. And you want to do this not just for your Windows 10, but for your your server as well. Any question? Okay. All right. So once I looked at the histogram bar, I'm going to take a screen capture. So make sure that you screen capture this. Or print screen, or you can do a snippet with Windows. Okay. And then we, I already show you the report. So on the report, you can read the information. So if you click the option here, go to report. And then we want to go into the committed GPU memory. That means that that's going to be the usage of your processor, your, your video your graphic processor. So here, uh, what was it? So I'm at like about 10 gigs. Okay, so that will be the value here. Nine, eight, nine, eight, seven, eight. So we would be roughly. You will find that right here, the M bytes or the bytes, those are bytes. So when you convert that, that will be about nine gigs about. Okay, and then What's the commit memory bytes? Maybe I didn't add the GPU. So record your information on the, um, I think this one is for the bottom. Twenty five, twenty five, one five five. Okay, physical disk. What is the percentage of idle time? It should be close to what you've seen before in number twenty two C. So here, 
go down to the physical disk. And we want to take a look at the percentage of idle. So our percentage of idle, yeah, 99.993. So pretty close. Right earlier, we recorded 99, the rough estimate. Your percentage processor time. So processor go down, percentage processor time. which is this one right here. So I have about two, two point, wait, let me see. It was 6.586. Pretty low. And then we are gonna go into your disk management next. So once we're here, we can minimize this and then go to storage under disk management. This is where we would see section of our drives that were logically divided for usage like OS. And these are called partitions. Things. Okay. And then you have other disks, multiple disks, you would see them as partitions. Now, you would only visibly see them if it's recognized by the OS or the OS file system. Sometimes if you have dual boot, you would see an unknown section for Linux because Windows will not be able to recognize some releases of Linux file system will be recognized, some are not. Okay, so the capacity of the C drive, I have about, um, 476.94, so close to 500 gigs. Now, what if this drive is one terabyte and they only format it for 500 gig? You would only logically see those 500 gig if the other ones are not use, it would say unallocated. If it's not formatted, we won't be able to see it on the disk management side, but we will see on the installation side. What is the type of drive for C? You will see those are here. C, if anytime you have an active partition is an, a bootable partition. So it will say it's a boot drive, it is an active drive, and it is a primary partition. So we would say a boot partition, an active partition, and a primary. Depending on how you, you create that section or you create those the, the section on the drive, on the MBR, you can only do four. On GPT, you can have up to 192. Um, you know, but you only would have one boot at the time for, for OS. You can't boot two OS at once. So we are only able to load one boot at a time. So on the actual drive, it has a small section that's created for boot and it will boot the, it will put the files for boot in that drive so that way it will boot for OS. Okay, and the file system, you would see that here. And Windows uses, all the newer version of Windows uses new technology file system, which is NTFS. And NTFS is a better file system than your EXFAT. You ever buy your flash drive and you look at your property? EXFAT is compatible across all OSs. But NTFS is better on the security end in that it does provide you with encryption and it does provide you with compression capability on the fly with file system. EXFAT, the reason why your flash drive and your SD comes as EXFAT is because Mac OS and Linux can read EXFAT along with Windows, but they all have their own file system in concurrent, just like how Windows has NTFS, FAT, and EXFAT. And FAT stands for file allocation table, it's just like a chart 
where it would be able to map out your where your file location is based on the memory address or the address in that in that drive. Now, FAT, there were a different size in the bit size for FAT and the current windows, we are using 64 along with all the other OSs. EXFAT is 64 bit, okay? So the status of your drive, and it will say the status of your drive, it's online, that means that it's mounted in other OS, we would say that will be mounted and it will be active, meaning that it would have the OSs being used and it's healthy. So we can say healthy online. Okay, what is the free drive space? So we don't have any free drive space, but when you look at free drive, they are different than unallocated space. Unallocated space, meaning that it's space that are not formatted for file system. And then free space is just space in that file system that can be used for extension of the drive. So it will be in, in Microsoft, it will be green. So blue is your current drive that's formatted. Free space would be green and unallocated would be black or brown. Okay. So here there's none. And at home you might have some different. Okay. What is the percentage of the free space? I would say 0% because there's none. Yeah, if you have something different, you can record it. I think they format my 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 drive a little bit different than yours because it's a different, uh, it's a later system that they bought. Okay, so you want to have a storage where you will put your data. I do this. I, I pull all my data and I put it on the D. I also back it up external driving cloud. <clears throat> I keep my C very minimal. My laptop, my C drive is only 250 gigs and I'm always running out of space. Whenever I create videos, I have to go in and clean up all my garbage, all of that to free up space, but because I'm just using a lot of, of drive space. Um, but D, I would have something the same, about one terabyte and then that should be plenty for common user. But for those of us who use a lot of drive, right? You want to go like two terabyte or higher or something like that. And you don't have to use it all. You can section it, use half of it, and then section another half for other drives. Okay, and that was all. So we looked at computer management console. We also looked at monitoring tools in Windows. So you know how to do that in case you need to. Um, and then we are going to look, we looked at your settings and then your driver for your audio devices and your USB and some of the others. Okay. So next week, <clears throat> I hope that I can show you a little bit on AWS because many of you will be working in AWS area, no matter on cloud, on, on Azure. Um, you know, we are gonna use the student free account and then I want, I want to show you how you can SSH into a, a machine on AWS. And AWS has its own certification. If you have that certification, it's also highly demanded. Most companies use Amazon because it's affordable. So, you know, so we'll touch on that. And I think after week six, I'm gonna only require you to come to lab one time a week because you're gonna spend the second day doing the practice exam. Okay, I'm gonna open up the part one and I want you to use that time to be able to do that. So that way, I hope that, Cal State San Marino emailed me yesterday that they said they, they are putting in the, the money into our foundation in which I can use to buy your, your voucher for A+. Plus. So after you complete the course, if we get you the voucher, you have the whole year to uh, pursue the certification. If you 
don't use it for the whole year, you will lose it. Now, um, if you already have an A plus, or if you already took the first half of the A plus and you want to pay for the second half yourself, talk to me and I can use it toward another certification. But usually we buy it for the course that you're in. So for my students that are in Network Plus now, they're going to get the Network Plus certification voucher. And then if we have money left, then, you know, if you take the next set of class, then we'll buy you the next one. Okay. And it will be CompTIA based or whatever class that will be parallel with. All my classes for CIS for the IT program, they all have certification, including Python, right? I'm not sure if they're going to let me buy the Python one. They only said IT ones, but let me ask. Or the, the Microsoft C++ or the Java one. So we'll see. All right. Any questions? Save your work, upload it. You're done with the lab for this week. I will let you know. I think after week six, we are going to do only one session to come, and that will probably be, would it be better on Wednesday or Monday? Wednesday? Wednesday? Yes. Yeah, and plus, plus the beginning of the week, all your other classes are probably very busy because they started assigning work, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's plan on Wednesday. If there are changes, I will put it in announcement in case you don't come to class. And congratulations to Moses for winning the quizzes game. I will have another one coming up in two weeks where you can also win another gift card. Um, and I think that's it. That's all she wrote for today. Any questions? Thank you. Have a good night. Let me. Okay. Good. Windows made their own like, their own Linux version.